Well, good morning and welcome to Overly Vast Nurseries on a beautiful sunny morning in early spring. And here on the nursery where we grow a wide variety of outdoor garden plants, I'm wondering if you're interested in finding out about some of the plants that we're growing here on the nursery and ones that you could possibly plant around your home. And if so, can I suggest that you think about clicking and subscribing to this channel because we're busy posting new videos all the time. As our plants begin to come into flower or show interest, that's when we'll put them together and then bring them to you in a series of videos. And if you're subscribed to the channel, then each time we post a new video, you'll be finding it turning up in your feed. Lots of really good plants, including, as you see, some really attractive and very colorful perennials. Now, there's all sorts of perennials, of course, ones that are small and compact, ones that are taller, ones that make really good plants for cutting, ones that are really easy to grow. And of all of the perennials that are easy to grow, in that category, I would definitely include these plants, the geums or avens as they're commonly known. Now, my introduction to geums was many years ago when I was a boy, I seen them growing in my parents' garden. My mother was growing a very old variety, still grown today, called Mrs. Bradshaw. It was one that had orangey red flowers on it and this kind of coarse textured leaf. It was one that probably was grown from seed and when you grow plants like that from seed you wind up with a great deal of variability and I remember honestly being distinctly underwhelmed by the plant. It grew and prospered and done very well but it really didn't flower that much and I also now thinking back to those days probably know that it needed to be divided. So one of the things that I wanted to do was to bring you up to date with some modern day breeding and introduce you to this fantastic variety, which definitely really impresses me and certainly reinvigorates my interest in geums and avens again. This is a variety known as Temple Rose, one that was raised uh, in Oregon by Terra Nova Nurseries, and it's quite simply fantastic, as you see. Highly unusual in that it has this pink color. Most of the geums, so through history, have come with reds and oranges and kind of yellows too. They're descended from species that grow very widely apart throughout the world. Most of the varieties have an anchorage in species that grow in the Balkans and in places like northern Turkey. But they also have some origins in species that grow in South America, in central and southern Chile, would you believe? And down through the years, plant breeders have done a remarkable job in selecting out the better performing hybrids. And out of that now, Terra Nova has brought this wonderful variety that, as you see, is extremely free flowering. So as well as having pretty pink semi-double flowers that it carries early on in the season and then keeps repeating because it's bringing up new growth from the center of the crown that then produces buds and keeps it going through into the middle of the summer, I suppose, you'll probably be able to have this growing nice and strongly and vigorous in your garden. It's a zone 5 plant. It's really remarkably adaptable and very easy to grow. And also what's very important in today's world, things like rabbits and deer and that sort of nuisances really don't bother with them. So there really is now a lot of good things going about growing the GMs and in particular modern day varieties like these that are vegetatively reproduced. Remember I told you about how I thought my mother's plant was probably grown from seed and therefore was perhaps not the best of the clones? Well, this is one in comparison that has got identical genetic material in it because it's vegetatively produced. That's why as you look down the plants here, they're nice and uniform. That's why they're able to have all of these flowers 
and why it's a really superior variety. The flowers are really pretty. If I look in close at this one, you'll see here that it has this very pretty shade of pink. It's a really gorgeous little one, if I can let the sun hit it there for a minute. So lots and lots of flowers that it'll produce on plants that are nice and compact and bushy, on semi-evergreen foliage that persists well through the season, and just one little cultural thing that I will also pass on. Remember my mother's plant that I was telling you about didn't flower that well? Well, James flower better when they're regularly divided. Young, healthy, strong, vigorous plants like these carry lots of flowers. When you have a plant that's formed an established clump in the garden that hasn't been divided for say three or four years, the flowering ability decreases. It'll still produce flowers, but it won't produce so many. So this is one plant that you should think when you get it established in the garden that you should split it each spring or fall and then plant it elsewhere in the garden so that of course you'll have more plants of it but also you'll be able to keep it flowering with much much more ab abundance. Just a word now about the soil conditions and that is that they do best in a free draining soil to which has been lots of organic matter worked in, humus, uh, planting compost, that sort of thing. They love to have a nice fibrous humus rich soil that helps to retain the moisture during the drier periods keeps them going and if you've got a free draining situation then they'll really love that so that's that the other thing is that we have on the tags here that they grow in a sunny location that's true they do and they'll flower very well in a sunny location but sometimes if your soil is a little gritty and perhaps gets too dry during the summertime and the impact of the sun comes down on them you might notice that some of the leaves get a little burnt around the edges that's the sun impact on them so for that reason if that happens to your plants you might have to think about planting them somewhere where they'll get a little bit of protection from the hot afternoon sun so there's just a couple of things in most cases they'll do perfectly well in a sunny location because that's where you're going to get maximum flowering but when you do that it's very important to work in plenty of organic matter and also mulch them too because the mulch will help to retain moisture and keep the roots cool of which they will love so after all that I really wanted to tell you about the really magnificent breeding effort that has gone into producing this gorgeous variety. This is GM Tempo Rose, definitely one that you should think about planting in your garden because it's a gorgeous, really pretty little pink, free flowering and very easy and reliable variety to grow.